numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, Hello. Five, Surprise. This is like pearly noise. I'm back. I don't know if anybody's watching. But I missed such an obvious and important bug from this morning. Um, that I've come back to fix that bug. So, by the way, this morning was Coding Rainbow episode number 49, which means this Thursday it's going to be episode 50, which means I've got to do something special for episode 50. So this is really like episode 49. Point A. <laughs> I hope that I'm, I hope that this is working. Uh, point one, 49 A, 49 and a half. Maybe this will just be, I don't know if we'll edit this together. This will just suddenly appear at the end of 49. It'll actually be two different YouTube videos. Who knows? But I'm back. Uh, I, I hope to actually have more time to do more stuff. But I am only here just to do one thing. I have to leave in about 15 or 20 minutes. This is a nice thing, though, about having a video studio <laughs> and you can just, with the camera set up. I can just turn on and live stream whatever I want. Does everybody can see me? I'm not seeing myself in the, my own preview. So I'm just going to do a quick refresh of the page to see if I see myself. Um, but let me know in the chat if this is working for you. Um, and I see that Oliver writes, all seems good. Uh, so anyway, I've got to go find the example from this morning, which I'm now opening up processing. This dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot, this dot, this dot. Okay, processing is open. <laughs> ah, processing is open. Come back, processing, and go to open recent blob tracking two. Okay, so if you recall, I had made an improvement here. It works. I don't know why I can't see myself in the preview, but I'm just going to have to trust that you guys are seeing me. If it ever stopped working, please tell me that it stopped. Um, okay, so what do I want to do here? This is my blob tracking. We have this threshold where they become one blob or separate blobs. It's working very nicely. Uh, okay, so what I want to do is, okay, so I made the blob tracking tutorial video. This will not be a new tutorial video. This will just be a like, hey, I'm back. Let me show you one more thing. So, and what I'm going to do is go back and make the actual uh, section um, uh, where I add all the points of the blob and then find the shortest distance again. Even though that's not entirely necessary, <laughs> I've got to do that anyway, okay? So, because I, what I had done wrong was I never added the first point. Otherwise, of course, it would work. Okay. Here we go. I'm ready. This dot, this dot. This dot, never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. Not loading at all for me. Well, some people are saying it's working, some people are saying it's not. So I don't know what to do about that. Okay. Uh, here we go. Let me minimize this, bring this over here. And time to do my addenda, addendum. OK, people are saying it works. <laughs> All right. Well, this is being recorded to disk anyway. So even if this live stream stops working, I will have this video saved. OK. Back for a quick addendum. I had tried, remember, to make it work where you find the shortest distance to any pixel as part of the blob, and that didn't work. Well, I had made a silly error. Of course, the internets uh, saved me from my own failings. And so I'm going to quickly add this back in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an array list of p vectors called points. Boy, I, I, didn't I already have this? Uh, I'm going to say points is a new array list of p vector objects. Uh, okay, and then 
Uh, and then what did I do? Every time there's a new point, I would say point dot add new p vector x comma y. Oops, don't, don't, don't. And then in a show, what I also want to do is say for int i equals zero, i is less than, oh, no, 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 no. I can use my p vector, look at all of the p vectors and just say, uh, 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 make it blue and then type in a point. Um, da, 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 v dot x, v dot y, there it is, and I don't know what is going on, whether things are working or not working. Um, so we can see here now that I'm seeing all the points that are part of the blob in addition to that bounding rectangle, okay? So one way that I could do to find multiple blobs, right, instead of, uh, in I could, instead of simply finding that bounding rectangle, I can now find the shortest point to any point. Ah, but what was the mistake that I made? Here was the mistake that I made. Look, in the add function, every time there's a new point, I add it to that list. But guess what I forgot? When I first make the blob, I make it, I make it with an xy. So what I forgot was to say points.add new p vector x comma y. So now I should be able to go back and add that code. So I'm going to comment this out, which is an excellent method, and I'm going to do another method which says that uh, uh, d is, I'm going to start it with like a really high distance, and then I'm going to look through all of the vectors, and I'm going to do the temporary distance is the distance between that x, distance square between that x and y and the vec that particular point. And then if that temporary distance is less than the distance, um, then distance equals that temporary distance. So this distance, this d is like a record. I want to find the shortest distance between the new point and any point that's inside the blob. And if it's less than the threshold, go right ahead. So now I'm going to run this. And this should actually work. <laughs> and it does. So, and it works, and it's perfectly fast. Uh, so the only reason it wasn't working before, and you can see how this threshold, that distance threshold works beautifully as well. Right? It combines the blobs when they're in within a certain threshold. And I can change that, right? by making it higher. So well, what's higher going to do? I should make it lower. <laughs> right? Oh, I, I really should change this. <laughs> so that it, OK, so I change this, make this lower. I should just have it changed by 5 or something. Uh, OK, and so now we can see here there's, there's separate blobs until they get quite, quite close. Let me just change that right now because this is driving me crazy. Um, I want to change here. I, whenever I press the key to change those threshold values, I want to change it by like five so that I don't have to, uh, so that I don't have to um, be pressing it so many times. So here they are, right? Here are two blobs. Uh, and you can see them, whoops, no, the color threshold. Now the distance threshold, they're separate blobs, right? When that distance threshold is five, we get lots of extra little blobs. They really don't become the same blob until they're literally touching each other. But if that distance threshold is more like 60, then when they're within 60 pixels, they become. So this is another way of doing it that's perhaps a little bit more accurate than the other way, but it works. Okay, so I fixed that problem, thank you very much. I did both now, this video now contains both solutions, one solution being the clamping to a rectangle, right, finding the distance of the new point to the edges of the blob, versus another of just finding the shortest, di the shortest distance of the point to the, the rectangle itself, the shortest distance of the point to any points within the rectangle.
<laughs> okay, that's the end of this video now, for sure, until I record another addendum. Goodbye. Okay, so uh, interestingly enough, uh, Thomas is saying it's not working. It's also not working for me. I cannot watch my own stream. Let's see if I do it over here. Uh, let's go to Shiftman Live. Shiftmanception. This is what's happening to me. Is this, so I don't know why the stream isn't working for some people, but it is working for other people. You can see that it's not working for me. I really, I want the moment where I appear behind myself. Uh, okay, um, so let me see if I have any actual questions in the chat. I see some not actual questions in the chat. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anybody have any, so that was just really what I came on to record. I guess I have a little bit more time. Um, does anyone have any other questions they would like to ask? Let's play some music. We can do, let's do a, um, let's do some green screen footage. You want a coding challenge? You don't want me to just be doing my dancing in front of a green screen? I'm waiting for questions to appear, but they're not coming. When are the rainbows going to appear? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, creepy is right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> and I think I'm overdoing it. But no, <laughs> nobody will, nobody's watching this. There's 40 people watching this. Yeah, I'm also losing it. Uh, <laughs> do I know C++? I do know C++, but I haven't used it for a while. Um, let's see here if, I, I think that's really all I came, I guess this idea of, oh wait, look, hold on a sec. There's me, now it's working for me, because there's me, with the previously not working video, but it, it is not working again. Could you code a calculator in 10 minutes? Could I make a quick thumbnail with the new correction? Yes, yes. Thank you. So, hold on, I have to do something very important. This will be a thumbnail for the video. Oh, wait, this is a good one, too. Well, except, uh, except I think I want my distance threshold to be less. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is better. <laughs> Move my mouse. Okay, good point. <laughs> Color threshold isn't really working very well. Let me hold on. It does run kind of slow when there's a lot of points. <laughs> oh wait. Oh yeah, no. This is like, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, everyone. I I don't know um this is it for today. I will be back on Thursday. Let's check. Um, 
Um, actually, let me just take five minutes to answer. Let's do another Q&A because this is actually a question that's not in. Uh, let me, this is a question that's in, the, in my Slack channel. Uh, I feel like I can't uh, under, where is it? Let me find it. Under share work? No. Here it is. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a quick Okay, I'm going to do a quick, um, oh, and I want to bring up something, uh, inside P5 videos. Looking inside P5, okay. 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 Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I lost my chat. Okay. Hello and welcome to another Q and A uh, video. The question for today's Q and A comes from Michelle, and Michelle writes, "On helping with P five development, I'm still beginner, but is there a way I can contribute to it? Um, I was thinking about contributing to the inline examples. That might be a way. Are there certain examples which are good?" Uh, wants to keep in mind as a reference. So this is, oh, I have uh, <laughs> important text messages that I don't need to look at in the middle of this video. Ah, somebody edit that out. So um, you want to uh, do some, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start over, because I really should not have looked at the text message. I'm gonna start from the back, beginning. Okay. <laughs> Hello and what, Hello and welcome to another Q&A video. Today's question comes from Michelle. Michelle writes, um, help, I'm, I'm helping with P5 development. I'm still a beginner, but I, I want to know about <laughs> rephrasing her question. I'm just going to read it. Last try. Hello and welcome to another Q&A uh, creative coding video. In this video, I'm going to answer a question from Michelle. Michelle writes, on helping with P5 development, I'm still beginnery, but is there a way I can contribute to it? I was thinking about contributing to the inline examples might be a way via this page, and there's a link to a particular page that I'll show you in a minute. Are there certain examples which might be a good one to keep in mind as a reference? Okay, so you're asking the question, let's say the, Michelle's asking the question, and I'm gonna generalize the question a bit more. I, I like P5, I'm interested in it. How can I contribute? So the first thing that I wanna say is that, um, there is a wonderful set of video tutorials that are being created by Luisa Pereira, um, and they are called Looking Inside P5. And you can see there's part one and there's also a part two. She also has both of these tutorials in Spanish, so they're both in English and in Spanish. Now, I would play it for you right now, but you can go, the links will be in this video's description, and you can go and watch them on your own. But what's wonderful about these video tutorials is they kind of explain to you, this is, let's say you want to contribute to P5.js. This is where you will land. This is the GitHub repository page for P5.js. GitHub.com slash processing slash P5.js. There's all this stuff. There's a source folder and a lib folder and a docs folder and this build task and test. How is this organized? How does it all work? Louisa does a wonderful job of going through all of these things in her tutorial videos. So rather than do that here, I'm gonna refer you to those particular videos. And what I'm gonna do here is show you a bit about how you might, uh, other places and how you might sort of get involved. So one thing is, is, is um, the first thing that you can do is just kind of go and look at some of the wiki pages. So here, um, the, you might look through, there's some tutorials and different things, but there, one thing that I would look at here first is this development wiki. So this development wiki uh, gives you a nice kind of set of ideas and things about what you can do in order to get started getting um, contributing. So you can look through the GitHub issues, there's links to that here. You could think about implementing a new feature. There's lots of stuff here. There's, 
instructions of what you need to do to set up and download it. Some of this stuff might look a little bit intimidating or a little bit scary, but P5.js is a friendly and open place. It doesn't matter what your skill level is. We want you to contribute. We want you to help. So come and give it a try and see where you get stuck. Send me a tweet. Um, post on the processing forums. There's various places where you can uh, where you can get help. I also have a bunch of video tutorials about GitHub that you could take a look at. Now, uh, Michelle had asked. Michelle had pointed out this particular uh, this particular wiki page, which is called the development checklist. And the development checklist is kind of a checklist. Oh, I wish I had looked at this for my WebGL video earlier. But you can sort of see here are a bunch of things that are kind of in progress or being developed that you can think about contributing to. And one of the things that you can look at that she had noticed here, da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, I'm going to find it more quickly, is the uh, uh, inline, uh, inline exam. Okay, wait, hold on. What am I looking at here? Sorry. Reference sketches. Sorry. So these are sketches and things that are for the reference. Now you can see that some of them are not crossed out, meaning they haven't been done yet. ID, class. So let's look at how that works. And I'll show you a little bit about how you might do this. So oh, these aren't links. So, um, so let's say you want to um, create something for the, um, the ID function in P5DOM. How would you do that? So let's go. And I'm going to show you, actually. I'm going to go to P5JS. I'm going to go here to source. And actually, I just realized this is all the source for all the stuff that's in the P5.js library itself. And it all gets compiled together into that big P5.js library. But the P5DOM function, the P5DOM library is actually different. And it's right here in lib add-ons add p5dom.js. So you can see here is actually all of the source code for p5dom.js. Now, I, what I want to do is go back to that development checklist. Ah, uh, it's not showing up. If I, uh, there we go. That's what I wanted it to show up. And let's look back um, under DOM. And we can see that, for example, uh, position is implemented. So right here, we can see that position is implemented. So I'm going to look for the position function. Uh, so I can see, actually, this is the source code for the position function in P5DOM. So what position does is it takes a DOM element and gives it an absolute position on the page. I don't have my, I'm not looking at my chat, and I'm worried that something's not working. OK. So um, now here's the source code for it, but up here is a quick little example. Create a canvas and call canvas.position. And look how this is formatted. It's formatted at example with a div with code class equals no render, because the code isn't rendered, or maybe it should be rendered, I don't know. And then uh, close code tag, close div tag. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to copy paste this. Pause, point. <laughs> editing the video. So now what I'm going to do, oh wait, wait sorry, I'm going to come back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, let's look for the ID function. So I'm going to look for ID equals, equals function. <laughs> I got to find it. Oh, you know why it's not here. Tricky, tricky, tricky. That's Hold on, pause. Oh, no. P5 element. Why are some here and some aren't here? That's interesting. Oh, no, it's here. It's got to be here. Uh, that's weird. OK, hold on. I'm having trouble finding this function. So that, this is going to have to get edited, me searching edited out. Mm, hold on. 
There it is. Oh, it's in P5. So that's interesting. Um, some of the functions in P5 DOM, I went off on a tangent here. I don't know if this is going to be useful. Uh, I'll just keep my tangent. I don't know if I should make this a Q&A answer. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to, okay. I'm going to go back to where I was. So now I know where it is. Back, I couldn't find the function that I want to edit here in p5dom.js. And actually, what I didn't realize is the function id is a function that assigns a specific id to a dom element. And it's not actually in the p5.dom.js function. I'm sorry, add on it because it, it comes with core p5. It's actually part of core p5. And for that, I need to go to source and then. Um, I'm looking for p5 core p5.element.js, and here it is. So I want to look for id equals, whoops, id equals, and now here's that function. And you'll notice that function does not have an example. So let's just do this right now. We're going to live on YouTube, on the air, make an example, and submit a pull request. <laughs> Am I logged in? Oh, I'm logged in as Shiftman. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to hit edit because I have uh, privileges to make changes. So I have to make sure. So now I want to look for ID equals. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to paste that in. Oh, I lost it. So hold on. <laughs> I got I to gotta get back to uh, lib add-ons p5 dom. And I'm going to search for, uh, what was one that we liked? Uh, position. Position. Here it is. I got to get this example stuff right here. I'm going to go back here. And now I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to paste this in here. Ooh. So I need to fix this so that the spacing is right. You know, I could be more thoughtful about this. Uh, and then I need to make sure this is closed. So now you can see I've added the code for an example, but this is the code for the position. So what I want to do is do make give it an ID. And I'll make that ID my canvas. And then what this does is uh, I'll write a con assigns a CSS selector ID to the canvas element. So I don't know if anybody, so this is now adding a quick little example that shows you how you can use the ID function. And then all, oh, there's German going on in the chat now. Um, and then uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom and I want to create a new branch and start a pull request. So adding an uh, inline example for ID function. And I'm going to write, I'm live on YouTube demonstrating how to make a pull request and add an inline, uh, inline uh, example. So once I do that, I'm going to click Propose File Change. And there's some guidelines for contributing that I could click at. And I want to see, uh, and I'm going to create this. Uh, this, you can see my change is just in this one p5.element, it adds just this code. And I'm going to say create pull request. And it's going to do some checks to make sure things are OK. And we'll see and on Thursday, this Thursday's coding rainbow, the, uh, there will be a mystery. We'll, we'll discover, was this pull request merged or was it not merged? Stay tuned to be continued. Oh, I need a sound effect for dun, dun, dun. Um, is that, uh, uh, okay, I won't look for that right now. Okay, so again, I kind of went off on a little bit of tangent of showing you a very specific thing, but basically, what you, uh, the P5 as an environment is designed to be both something that beginners can use to learn to program and also can learn to contribute to an open source environment. And the place to do that first is GitHub. The problem with GitHub is it doesn't appear that friendly to you. So I would encourage you to check out the wikis in the development page. I would encourage you to tweet 
at p5xjs on Twitter, to post on, on the processing forum, uh, forum.processing.org, and you can go down to the um, p5js, uh, and here p5js development questions. If you post to there and are looking for help on how to contribute, post there, send me a tweet so I can look at your post and help answer it. Um, as well as I'd recommend checking out Luisa's videos. And also, something you can just literally do to be a part of the, the contributions is go to the issues page. This is the issues page. Read through some of the issues, scan through them. If there's something that you think should be a feature or something you're not sure about if it works correctly, contribute, write an issue, file an issue. Do not worry about filing an issue correctly. It, you, incorrectly. You cannot file it incorrectly. The act of filing an issue is the act of filing it correctly. And if there's ways, if you need to close the issue and reopen a new one, all of that is possible and fine. So please come and join and contribute to P5JS. And um, yes, Dramatic Chipmunk, that's the name of the sound effect I'm looking for. Um, and hopefully this video was somewhat useful about a little bit about how you can get started contributing to P5JS. Thanks for watching. Okay, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in to this extra bonus live session. I will be back on Thursday. Will it be merged? Will it not? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys soon. Um, can anyone share link to GitHub? I, I know that I can. Uh, so I'm going to type this in. That should be the GitHub repository. Uh, now I just shared it to the chat. Um, so thanks, you guys, for tuning in today, for being a part of. I know you guys want me to do a coding challenge, but unfortunately, I have to leave. Uh, and um, yeah, so by the way, I, I had some meetings today. And I, uh, Alvara makes a good point. And I am planning to have some guests on to talk about their work and different projects uh, very soon. So that's actually something that's coming and I'm excited about. Uh, integrating that into these sort of like live uh, sessions uh, beyond just uh, programming tutorials. Um, so I'm going to do definitely do a coding challenge on Thursday, just some interesting algorithm that makes a pattern or a game. So uh, make your voice heard in, if you're part of the pa patrons, you can uh, post what you think would be good for Thursday in the Slack, or you can also uh, just post to the Rainbow Topics uh, GitHub issues. And I will um, see you guys soon. I'm going to unfortunately press this button. But I'm going to go back to having some music to play you guys out. So this is random. This is noise, Perlin noise, that is. In the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related.